Hey there doctors, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about ERRS, or Extraction Retraction Regret Syndrome. I did not trademark that. That is the trademark of Dr. William Hang with fake Face Focused Orthodontics. He is an amazing orthodontist out of, I don't know, somewhere in, in Orange County, Dana Point maybe? Somewhere down there in the beautiful world of SoCal with the beautiful people. But anyways, he's amazing. I've talked to him before, and a lot of you are getting trained by him, and I'm all for it. His orthotropics, his ERRS classes, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I would not say at all that he competes with me. I completely 100% agree with everything he teaches. A lot of what I teach is a spinoff of that. Um, this Mine is like a little more practical version of that, but same concepts. Because what is ERRS? What well, happens all the time? We're gonna get patients um, who want retreatment and they're saying, hey, I wanna fix my smile again. I had braces as a kid. Maybe, maybe they pulled out some teeth, one, two, three, or four premolars. And what they're asking you to do isn't possible because there was teeth pulled out. And we're looking at the case and we're like, this, we're taking a SAF and we're seeing the incisors are crazy upright and we're looking at the E-line and we're looking at the profile and it's looking terrible. And if you don't know anything what I'm talking about, all these keywords that I said, I have videos already made. So this is just a high level video specifically about ERRS. If you want to know about more about premolar extractions, when to do them, when to avoid them, SAFs, anything like that, you can go into my channel and look up those keywords or playlists. You can go to the top um, tab navigation bar at the top of my YouTube channel, which is Straight Smile Solutions. You'll see a little magnifying glass, put in those keywords, and everything I've taught you on that subject will come up. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes just there's nothing we can do. I mean, sure, we can straighten the teeth, um, but the profile's still going to look awful. The bite's still not going to be good. Um, lips are still going to be flat. Airway's still going to be small. Sometimes the only solution and I look at a case, I'm like, uh, we got to put the premolars back in where they're supposed to be, you know, that were pulled out when they were a teenager. You know, I'm sorry, which can be a little bit tricky. I, I find it way, way easier to do an Invisalign, like way easier to do an Invisalign, um, to open up some some spaces. Sometimes you're going to do one, sometimes you're going to do two, three, four, um, and then they get to restore it after. Um, so this is an interdisciplinary case. So it's really important that we're taking x-rays along the way, and it's really important that we're working both with the surgeon and the restorative dentist to make sure that the placement of the roots of the adjacent teeth is proper. Sometimes, you know, the doctor that's doing it is going to be doing all. They're going to be doing the Invisalign, they're going to be placing, and they're going to be restoring. In that case, that makes it a lot easier. But you need to make sure you're working with your lab, that you're getting what you want. Um, not all patients, I mean, sometimes after you've had extractions, the bone starts collapsing, the ridges start collapsing, and you just don't have the, you're not able to open the spaces again. So this is why, this is why it's amazing to get SAF, to get a CBCT slice. Um, you can even have something like beam readers read it and let you know if it's possible to labialize, um, or buccalize or both, um, the teeth so that you can make space. You can use sequential distalization, you can use proclination, you can use um, arch expansion, but you need to find out what methods you can use to make that space because sometimes it's not possible if the bone isn't good enough because it's already collapsed. But it is out there. Patients get ERRS all the time. Obviously, it's going to be very expensive. They're going to spend five to seven thousand dollars on the ortho. They're going to have to spend, goodness, a couple thousand a pop on each implant. So, I mean, this is basically the cost of a car or college tuition. It is not a cheap, it's a multi, multi-year plan to put their teeth the way it should have been to begin with. And, you know, it gets a little more messy if it was a recent extraction. So you just have to tread really lightly, um, you know, with the whole suggestion or you might be dragged into a little bit of a lawsuit. So, um, you know, tread lightly. I tend to feel a little more comfortable with cases that were as done 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, I don't need some orthodontist down the street trying to sue me because I'm saying they didn't need teeth out because sometimes they did. So, um, you know, but that's what ERRS is. It happens and often it can be fixed. All right. Thanks so much.